but I think things have moved on quite a bit since then, although it does bother me, it is fashionable for young doctors to embrace homeopathy because it implies they're open-minded and kind. Yeah. Yes, and well, that is very, very disturbing. We've got to separate the open-mindedness and kindness from that, from from no, from nonsense. Yeah. Um, the placebo effect obviously is so important, mm. and uh, one has to admit that it, it would be possible. It's possible to make a patient really get better, provided you spin a sufficiently plausible story. As spin, a as distinct from shaking, would <laughs> yes. Right. Um, as a scientist, I'm I'm uncomfortable with what I see as the abuse of science. I mean, talking about quantum therapy and things like that. Um, however, one, I suppose one could defend it by saying that anything that fools a gullible patient into um, into getting better by the placebo effect is well. I mean, I don't like that way of looking at it. But um, is it possibly defensible to to for doctors to use? Mumbo jumbo because it because it makes you feel better because it makes you feel better yes that kind of deceit we're talking about deceit yeah, yeah. I, I I think that is patronizing to the patient um, I am not averse to a little bit of deceit when it comes to my grandchildren my grandchildren come running to me Papa Michael, Papa Michael, knowing I'm a doctor and they've got some minor complaint and I lay hands <laughs> and they feel better. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, but what you're suggesting is we should be treating adults like children. And I think that's an affront. I think it is too. Uh, it's not to what I'm suggesting. It's deceit, I'm, I'm, I know. Yeah. And I, so th in that respect, I think that's an affront. But at the same time, whilst we are practicing proper scientific proven uh, medicine, there is no harm, and it's by no means deceitful, to realize that our presence, our aura of knowledge and confidence, has a powerful placebo effect. Indeed. And yes. I see no harm in yes. that. Yes. So if somebody said to you, well, um, I tell my patients that they've got vibrating energy fields and they've got quantum energized vortices and they've got this, that, and the other mumbo jumbo, and I defend it on the grounds that it actually helps them to get better because of the placebo effect, you would, you would disavow that because it's dishonest. Yes, yeah, deceitful. It's deceitful. Yeah. And it's a betrayal of science when they're using scientific language to um, put down smoke and befog people. Uh, it's a betrayal of the English language. It's not a, a betrayal of science. They are hijacking perfectly good words and using them out of context. I mean, a particular example which upsets me is the way they've hijacked holistic. Oh, yes. Without even knowing what the word means. Yes. They, uh, the alternative practitioners uh, bang on about their holistic, thinking that holistic means whole. And it's nothing to do with W-H-O-L-E, it's to do with holons, H-O-L-O-N. Mm. And holistic is a beautiful way of describing the hierarchical organization of the human subject up and beyond the family unit, uh, where the, the, at each level the, um, the sum is greater than the parts. Yes. And the, very, the concept of holism is a beautiful, beautiful yes. concept, which has been debased. Yes by being hijacked by the alternatives. Yes. So you have a hierarchy of units within units within units, mm. and you look down one way towards the parts, and you look up the other way towards the, whole, the, the larger whole to which this is a, of which this is a part. Yes. And everywhere you get illumination. At every, at every level, every level, you ask yourself, why are the sum of the parts greater? Yes. And this is the exquisite, awesome organization of the human body not just at a molecular and a cellular level, but the human subject within the uh, nuclear family and the family yeah. within the nation state. Yes, that's very, very nice. Um, what's your attitude to the spending of NHS money on a homeopathy, a homeopathic hospital and so on? Um, well, I was guilty of receiving uh, headlines be because we questioned, uh, a group of us actually wrote to the purchasing authorities questioning the use uh, of NHS resources uh, on homeopathy. In fairness, the sum of money uh, being spent altogether is very, very small. It's quite a trivial amount. But it's not so much the, the sum of money. It, it, we have a serious principle at, at stake. Um, when 
we went through a period of a year or two when Herceptin, uh, quite rightly in, in, in my opinion, uh, was held up for the treatment of breast cancer until all the evidence was there. So we had extremely rigid cost-effectiveness analysis before we could use Herceptin. And, okay, there was a short passage of time when it seemed unfair, but in the long run, I think it's an appropriate way to go. Now, as from September the 1st, we've got uh, new guidelines on li licensing where homeopathic remedies can be licensed without any scientific evidence of efficacy. And my concern, not just my personal concern of most of the profession, is this will be taken as a green light to the purchasing authorities, um, giving it um, a certificate of approval. And because of um, public pressure and uh, political pressure, I'm concerned if we don't draw a line in the sand now, the problem will become a major problem. At the moment, it is not a problem. The sum spent is small, but we have to draw a line in the sand and say no further. Because that, that's approaching a, a double standard, is that? Is that, is that approaching, it's yeah. there. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> we yeah. already have formally arrived at a double standard uh, where, uh, I could quote your chapter and verse, but it was the MHRA uh, statement uh, issued uh, September the 1st that homeopathic remedies in order to be licensed for specific indications did not have to present evidence of efficacy using clinical trials. It was acceptable just to produce evidence of provings. Now, provings, pr provings that's sufficient to license homeopathic what does that mean? Provings has nothing to do with proof, number one. Again, an abuse of the English language. What it means is the substance that's being infinitely diluted uh, in its natural state, if given to uh, a human subject, will produce symptoms of that disorder. Uh, I, 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 I see you frown. Well, <laughs> uh, it, 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 to me, it's, it's just balmy. And I, for, if you forgive um, a satirical note here, because sometimes that's all you're left with, uh, it's equivalent to saying if a coconut falls on my head, I get a headache. Uh, therefore, extract of uh, coconut is good for um, the blocked sinuses. I mean, actually, that's not so satirical. That's more or less the way they would think, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it, it is precisely the way they think. Um, Arnica, Mon uh, Arnica Montana, the most popular remedy, diluted uh, the, the times th 10 to the 30th, mm -hmm. 30 C Arnica is used for uh, treating bruising. It's a yellow flower, and I think the proving is that uh, if you rub it on the skin, the skin goes a bit purple. Yeah. Yeah. That is very depressing. And, and this, the same standards are... Um, um, the, the, the same laxity of standards is not applied to conventional medicine. If you, if you want to use, if, if, you, if you as a, as a consultant want to use a, a drug to treat breast cancer and, and say that it's being used to treat breast cancer, it, it has to be demonstrated by a proper scientific trial, which is, which is not true of the homeopathic remedy. Is that, is that the case? Is that what you mean by double standard? Yes, and it goes way, way beyond that. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry takes a lot of knocks, and yes, occasionally they are unscrupulous. And yes, drugs are very expensive, effective drugs. But the reason they're so expensive is the, there may be 20 years of R&D to get to an effective product. Um, thousands of molecules which look promising at a molecular level and a cellular level. Then the preparation and the phase one trials, toxicity, tolerability, phase two trials in advanced cancer, does it cause advanced cancers to shrink? And then phase three trials, okay, let's see if it cures uh, cancer. We're talking about a process 20 years up until the point of licensing. Every step of the way is checked and double-checked uh, safety, efficacy, uh, uh, and so on.